Lijiang in the southwest of China in the Yunnan province is a very historic town. It's getting modernized rapidly now, however. We had the fortune to be there in 1997 when we photographed this video to give you a look at how really old it was back then. And still today, it's an old historic town that's worth visiting. During this program, we're going to randomly show you the different aspects of life in Lijiang. We're going to be showing kids and old people. We'll have a look at some of the shops. We'll go look at the marketplace and the modern new town. We'll do, be doing some excursions out of town as well. And generally just meandering around, showing you the sights in a wonderful mix of visuals. We flew in from Kunming and then rode in from the airport and to our hotel, which is a very nice, modern, grand Lijiang Hotel. This was a great place to stay. This hotel has a great location because you're just across the street from the old town and it's very modern. There's a beautiful lobby, really comfortable furniture. The rooms are really clean and really quite deluxe and very comfortable staff working the front desk and they speak some English, so it was very helpful to have this as our home base during our visit. There are some lovely excursions that you can take outside of the old town. There's a beautiful park right in the city with a wonderful lake and historic buildings and beautiful landscaping and very oriental atmosphere here. And there's some museum and historic exhibits as well and we had a good time walking around and enjoying that scenery. In 1997, Lijiang was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site, which is a very important recognition for this small village. As we leave the beautiful park and continue into the narrow lanes of the old town of Lijiang, we're gonna share with you the reasons why UNESCO designated this place to be a historic site. UNESCO has a wonderful and detailed description of Lijiang and its importance in which they say, Lijiang is an exceptional ancient town set in a dramatic landscape which represents the harmonious fusion of different cultural traditions to produce an urban landscape of outstanding quality. UNESCO has made a considerable effort to protect and preserve the historic quality of the old town of Lijiang. And UNESCO has had help from some partners, especially an organization called the Global Heritage Fund. And they worked on helping to save China's last living ancient town, as they put it. In their document, they say that in the heart of northern Yunnan province in southwest China, near the borders of Burma and Tibet is one of the last surviving ancient towns in China. Lijiang ancient town has survived intact for more than a thousand years with over 4,000 native families living within its core and protected areas. Lijiang's Nashi people still preserve much of their native Dongba culture and deep linkage to nature. The Global Heritage Fund was responsible for restoring more than 184 traditional homes in the old town's core area, and they removed about 300 modern buildings that they found inappropriate to the historical environment, as well as preparing uh, historic preservation guidelines for the local community, officials, and contractors to work with. This is one of several market squares in the heart of Lijiang, and it's really a lively, bustling place. It's a fresh fruit and vegetable market, and they've got chicken and meat and eggs and everything you need for your dining table. And people here shop the old-fashioned way every day. Most of them don't have refrigerators in this small old town. And so this is part of the daily ritual, shopping at the marketplace. It's particularly bustling in the morning, say between 9 o'clock and noon. It's a really active spot. So when you're in Lijiang, if you get to Lijiang, come down to the marketplace in the morning and have a look around. It's an old fashioned historic town, perfectly preserved. One of the only ancient cities in China that's left today. China's been modernizing at such a rapid clip that 
they've knocked down most of their old cities. They have lots of old villages out in the countryside, which are of some interest. 70% uh, of the population is still farmers living in those little country villages. But this is an actual city. One of the charms of Lijiang is simply walking around its old alleyways. The people here don't speak any English, but that's OK. You can get by with sign language. And in your hotel, if it's a nice hotel like ours, they'll speak some English at the front desk. In a few of the restaurants, you might find a waiter who speaks a word or two of English. And several of the restaurants have got menus that are in English as well as Chinese. So you can certainly get by when you're in Lijiang. And this old town is worth at least two days on your itinerary in China, or perhaps three as we're doing. And you combine that with a few excursions out into the countryside. But one of the greatest things to do in town is to come visit the local market. It's really great fun to walk around in this old town market from one stall to the next and check out what they're selling. Mostly it's vegetables for the local people, but there are some souvenir type tables with different knickknacks and historical kinds of items and jewelry and various kinds of artifacts to have a look at. And they don't speak much English, if any, but you can really still have some fun doing a little bit of bargaining or at least find out the price as we're doing now with this young lady who's gonna sell us a little cat figure. How much? It can get a little frustrating when you don't understand each other's language. 20, 20, okay. But there's always pen and paper, numbers, the universal symbols. Um, what's it made of? Sima. Sima. Sima? And sign language and a little bit of bargaining. Mao. Mao cat. And you can get by and have some fun with it. Nyombia? What's that? Hmm? Nyobia. Nyobia. <laughs> uh-huh. 20, huh? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. With all of the filming activity and the excitement here, I didn't get much bargaining or lowering the price in, but I bought it and still have that cat in the case today. The prices were so low, you really kind of feel guilty about trying to push them much lower. So. Just when you see what you like, buy it. Lijiang is several hundred miles of Kunming, the nearest major city. And you can fly there from all different parts of China now. Back in 1997, when we went there, there was only one flight a day, and that was only from Kunming. In fact, the Lijiang airport had just opened two years earlier. So things were really kind of quiet and peaceful there. The narrow streets of the old town are laid out in a curving and intersecting way with this flexible layout that it's kind of easy to get lost and disoriented. You can't easily find big landmarks to get your bearings, but that's all part of the fun. It's only uh, about 800 acres in total. So it's not that big an area that you're going to really get lost. Mm -hmm. So just let loose and go wander and turn whichever way attracts your fancy. When you look at how quiet and peaceful the streets were back when this was photographed in 1997, it's incredible to imagine how busy and popular it's gotten recently. For example, in the year 2012, there was a total of 16 million visitors in Lijiang, which was an increase of 50% over the year before. So tourism is really, really booming, and it can get just too crowded. So if you come here during the busy travel season in the middle of the day, you would easily get caught in a gridlock of tourists shoulder to shoulder on these little shopping lanes. And people have complain that it takes them a half an hour just to walk two blocks through the crowd, through this gridlock of bodies. So this is a big consideration for you. Come in the off season, come in the midweek, 
visit early in the day, late in the afternoon, and try and get around the crowds because it's still a wonderful place to visit. By now you've noticed the hard work and physical labor of the residents of Lijiang. Even the old folks are carrying around big loads of stuff on their backs in those huge backpacks. Well, it's because there's no wheeled vehicles, no cars allowed in the old town, and the streets are kind of bumpy, so it's hard to roll things, I suppose. You gotta carry it on your back. All of which makes good exercise and keeps these old folks healthy. I think Li Zhang provides us with a great example of the need to get traveling now before the world gets even more crowded. You know, every place in the world is getting more and more tourists uh, as Asians have the money and freedom to travel. As the middle class has more money and more time, you find that tourist towns and attractions all over the world are getting increasingly crowded. And as places get modernized, it's inevitable they're going to lose some of that authenticity, the original character that made them popular in the first place. So that's no reason not to travel. In fact, the opposite. It's a good reason to get out and go as soon as possible. Get off your butt and go visit that place that you've wanted to see. Don't wait much longer and maybe try and plan it to go in the off season. There's no question there's variation from one time of year to the other with crowds and also with the cost of travel. You can save money and have a better time if you're there in the off season, but don't wait, do it now. It was endlessly fascinating just to wander the little lanes of the old town, observing the buildings, the people, the kids. Just amazing place, a uh, place like you've never seen before. And it's all there still waiting for you. Now it has changed, it's modernized, but the essence and heart and soul of the town still survived. Back in 97, when we filmed this, nearly all of the shops were geared for the local residents rather than the tourists. And they had these open air shops that are workshops. The tailors are at work in these valuable retail spaces and very little sense of privacy. The, even the dentist's office is open to the public viewing from the sidewalk. <laughs> And the barber shops, you can peer in and observe the work in progress here throughout the town. No privacy, everything is shared. There's really a small town atmosphere of openness and friendship and casual life here in Lijiang in 1997 anyway. The restaurants, the families dining at the little table, it's all up and open and freely available to everybody who's walking by. Funky restaurants with local customers. And in 1997, we found no sign of a McDonald's or a Starbucks anywhere. Such a sleepy atmosphere that even some of the shop clerks are taking a nap on the sofa while waiting for a customer. Our next episode about Li Zhang is going to show you more of the old town with looks into some of the restaurants and little boutique hotels that you could stay at. And then we'll take you on a walk through the big outdoor food market.